so um, if you just enter this uh, link up here, uh, you will come to this um, uh, sheet sheet, we call it. Uh, it's a uh, tools we have developed uh, for easy going now through the workshop uh, when copy code and see how you how you do the different configurations. Now, before the workshops, we have this before the online sessions. So if you click on that one, you come to this page here. Uh, that shows the introduction, a little bit short about how this tool is working, um, how you can navigate uh, with these arrows down here. Uh, so you can easily navigate here. I think it's quite obvious how it works. So let's go here now. So as Chris said, you should have got the package for the workshop, um, uh, including some wires here for connecting later on on the workshop here. You should have got the nuclear boards for the U575. And also you should have got an development kit or discovery kit that is called L562. And this one we'll use later on for measuring the current consumption. Uh, you can also use an uh, DMM multimeter with one micro amperes resolution uh, for, for this later on hands on. You should all also got installed the Cube MX at least uh, version 6.5.0, uh, the Cube IDE version 1.9, uh, install the Cube U5 library package, the MCU package to the Cube IDE, and also install the Cube monitor power program by version 1.1.1 at least, uh, so we can have a graph and see how the current consumption varies over time. There's also some links to virtual COM port drivers, but I don't think you need that for Windows 10 users. I better have it there anyway. Um, and also you need uh, two micro USB cables. Uh, I hope you have that on your office as well. So in the homework, you should uh, install the Cube MX. It's our configuration tool that we use for setting up the microcontroller uh, for the application you will use. So download it, install it, and as well, download and install the Cube IDE. I hope it's been working fine for you. And as I said, install the Cube library, and um, that one we should as well have a look into the Cube IDE, how to integrate uh, the U5 MCU package. And as you haven't seen it before, we have some animations here showing how to do it. Uh, I will as well open up the Cube IDE here, um, just to show you uh, how it works. Um, so when you open up, let's see, just uh, scrolling down. When you open up Cube IDE, you get first a uh, launcher that, that asks for your workspace. Uh, so you just uh, enter your workspace place, and I have chosen here today the yeah the workshop 9th of June, and then you just launch that one. Uh, this can seem to be quite simple, but uh, and now I have some downloads going on here. Um, but now it's starting up here. So here's my workspace. And yeah, let's see if we can organize this better here. So, and now I just shortly will show you this package where you find this. So if you go under help in Cube IDE and go down to manage embedded software packages. Let me do like this instead. So. I get confused of these animations. <laughs> okay, so just you open up this Windows where we have all the software packages managers here. And if you scroll down to U5, you will see if you open up the different packages that we do have. And for this uh, workshop, we need this latest Cube U5 and 2 package. And um, I think actually uh, this is the latest one, yeah, 1.1.0. So you just click here and then install. And then it will download and, and, and um, 
integrate the whole MCU package for the U5. That's quite clear, I think. Uh, if we go back now to, to the project, um, and uh, let's see how we, we start the new project here, a little bit hands on to just check that everything's working. Um, you can start if you come to this screen. You can also have an icon here that says to start a new uh, STEM32 uh, project. But from this point, you can also go file new open project, STEM32 project. You click here. And we initialize the target selector. And then this window shows up. And here we should now uh, enter our part that we will use today. So it's STM32, U575, 75, set IT. And here you see you get two options, uh, one without the Q in the end and one with the Q. And this is the Q means here actually the SMPS version for the, for the voltage uh, regulator. So that one is we will use later on today. So we click on that one and I will click here. And now we're choosing that one, selecting that one. We press next here. And now comes this window up here that you can give it a name. And here we can just write uh, U5 uh, test homework. Like this. And you see the location is what we choose from the beginning. Where the, uh, where the work uh, space is. And we should also be aware that we don't uh, enable the trust zone. We will not handle that today in this hands-on today. So leave, leave this uh, unticked, this box here. And then we press finish. And now it starts to loading. Uh, the U5 now for our new product. Take some time here. And here it comes up some warnings. Um, about the iCache and the SMPs, but at this stage, uh, we just press yes here. Skip that one. And now it comes up here, make it bigger. So here you can see now, here's my workspace and some libraries and, and um, some drivers, some uh, linker files, and this IC file that is actually the configuration file, this one. So here now we can uh, just uh, go into the, we have this, the pinout configuration, you can see all the pins around the MCU, uh, you have the clock configuration, and here we can just check that we have four megahertz for the uh, MSIS clock. So um, we have four megahertz there. Um, we should now go back to pin configuration. And here we should now add our UART because this hands-on will just make some UART that's sending some message out on the UART to see that we are live. Everything's working. So you can use these categories. I normally use this A to Z. It's quicker to find, in my opinion. And we go down to the USART. And we will pick the USART 1. And you click on that one. And here we will now configure our USART to be an asynchronous UART. And uh, we will have no hardware flow. We will just check that we have the right settings. So I click here on the parameter settings down here. And I got the list here of the settings that is by default. So baud rate, uh, we should set 152. 
we should have eight bits and none parity and one stop bit. And that's already defined. So that's good. We should also have a look to the right here. And here you can see if I scroll a little bit, I can zoom in here. That uh, by default it has chosen the uh, usart rx pin to PA10, PA10, sorry, PA10, and the TX to PA9 pin. And that is the one we will use. We will also check uh, that we don't have any DMA settings because we will not use that in the simple hands-on. So we just check that, okay, it looks good. And as well, we will not use the interrupt for the user that is hands-on. And that is unticked to this box here. That's fine. So let's go on. Now I'm, I'm actually on, on the slide five in, uh, in the, Sheet sheet, if you're wondering. Uh, another thing we should also do, we should um, have a look into the iCache settings. And we should change this from disabled to one of these two, but I choose the one way because we will use that later on for the direct mapped cache. And uh, we check, we uh, select that. And we are ready with all the configurations right now. So we go over to the product manager tab here. And here you see um, the name we named this product to has come into this field here. We have the product location here. We have the cube IDE by default. Since we work in this tool, it's by default here. Uh, so we are ready for that. And now we will just generate some files. So we're using this um, configuration tool, code generator. And that's this with a gear sing sign icon. So this one, I just press that one. And it starts to generating. And I pop up here and warning that we have not en enabled the SMPS, but we are aware of that. So yes, okay. And now you see that it's updating the structure here with the files. Um, so now we have got the new files already. We have the new product here. And now we have like an, uh, uh, I'd say an, an, um, a base setup here. You can go into um, to the main. I will just double check, I will close that one. I will close this one as well to make it more clear. So I go into main.c file here, the source file. So we are in our product here. The other products I had before I have closed, so they're not will really confuse us. Uh, but but we have this uh, product active here. I go into the main.c file. And we should here from slide five, I'll pick that up again. Jump to slide number five. Uh, we have done all these steps here. Scroll down here because I need to copy. Here we are now. So we will code now. We will make a buffer with the text here. And for that, there is a uh, button here called copy code, this blue button. And that will copy this line into the buffer here in the, in the windows. And now I can go to the right line uh, position here. And for that definition, we should put it up here. Under use of code begin, private variables, we paste control V. So now I have pasted in this uh, buffer with this uh, coded text message in here. So now we have the buffer and next, we will also um, go back to the cheat sheet. And now we also need to transmit this text buffer. And here we have the function for that, the whole function you will transmit. We take a copy code of that one as well and go back to our main.c file. 
And this we will now put in around line 98. Use the code begin number two here. So we put it here before the while one loop. And just mark this line and then control V, paste it in. And now we have the UR transmit function call in our main.c. And that's it. So now let's compile our project. And hopefully it will go through. Yes, now there's no warnings. Fine. And now uh, we should have connected the board, the U5 board. We had up here. Sorry for scrolling a little bit around there, but here we have the here's the board. Can just show you this picture here. So on the uh, nuclear board for U5, we have in one end there's the link version three part that's communicating to the to the target MCU, which in our case is the U5. There is some LEDs as well here that we'll use during the day. And uh, yeah, you can see some schematics here for the for the buttons and how it's connected for the LEDs. So just for your information. Uh, so now when we have done that, we have compiled and now we should uh, debug. So then we press this uh, bug icon here. Start debugging. And then we come to this um, um, configuration and there's nothing to change. There's different tabs here. We will go in here later on in the hands-on, but we just press OK here. And now it should start to flash down the debugger uh, version of this project to the board. And here we go. So with first instruction in main is the whole init function. Um, so we will start there. But before we do anything else, before the starting the program, we should now uh, either use an external term terminal program, or we can use the integrated uh, command shell console. Um, you can just click on this one here. You go to to the window here, and and uh, and I uh, open up this uh, remote connection. You choose here from the first one, the serial port, and then you press new connection name. You press new here to connect to which serial com port you will have. And in my case, I think it's com port nine is this. So I just give a name, com port in, and finish, and OK. And here you see now we have already starting up the, the code once, so it's it's um, already running here. Um, so if you run again, you will see the text home exercise will show up here. And also, um, if you press the, the reset button on the nuclear board, you have the same effect. So the program is running now in the U5 board, sending out on the U USART1 this message home work exercise. 